we certainly praise and give God thanks for waking us up this morning. How many are glad he woke you up this morning? Uh, how many are glad he started you on your way? How many are glad he gave you a mind to press your way to the house of the Lord? Because we 
65 people in invitement. Somebody invited me to a meeting one night. And my heart just wasn't right. Something got a hold of me. It was the Holy Ghost. Over 30 years ago, people watched you walk with God. Sure, you ain't walking with God and you treat you bad all these years. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with him makes me love him more and more. People concentrate on the stuff they can't do. Let's concentrate on all the things you can do. Over here in hope. Fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. 
Surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angel charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. I'm going to skip down a little bit. Verse 15. Let me hit 14. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him and set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God's word is already blessed, amen? So, whatever it is, know this. God's God.
Yes, Lord. We have entered into the holies of holies. Yes, Lord. There's deliverance in the holies of holies. There's worship in the holies of holies. There's power in the holies of holies. The blood of Jesus is in the holies of holies. As you remain strong, gracious Father, as we stand here in your presence, we declare your glory. We declare your power. We declare your anointing all over our lives.
on just to the Lord and praise Him. Can we just say hallelujah? Can we just say hallelujah? Can we just give the Lord the highest praise? Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah!
number 12, and I want to begin reading at verse 37. It says, Blessed are those saints whom the Lord would he come find you watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Verse 38, And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants who find you watching. And this know that if the groom of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. In verse 40, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour who did not. Can we read that verse together? Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour who did not. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this anointing that is in this house. We ask the Lord that you expedite your word, that we may receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to take for a doctrine for the verse. Amen. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Of the Lord. And that fortieth verse says, Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man coming at an hour that ye think not. And as I was seeking the Lord for a word from the Lord and searching the scriptures, this theme kept returning to my mind and to my spirit. The Lord wants us to be ready. There's no doubt in our own minds that we've heard it now through the years that Jesus is soon to come. And we can see the signs and the times that Jesus is soon to come. We don't want to say that the Lord delayed his coming and not be ready for when he comes. Oftentimes we say to our own selves that I got time to get it out. I got time to straighten it out. But you really don't know how much time you have. Only God knows the time. So in this particular parable, Jesus is talking about a wedding. He's literally talking about a wedding. And in the Orient culture or in the Jewish culture, the bridegroom would go to the father's house to pick up the bride and then take the bride to his house or to their house, their new house, for a celebration. And the servants of the bridegroom's house, they were in charge of getting everything ready. They were in charge of getting everything set for the celebration. They were in charge of getting things ready. And what Jesus is teaching here is that uh, they didn't know when or what watch. Watch is the time. They didn't know what time the bridegroom would show up. Uh, the bridegroom may stay at the father-in-law's house and have dinner for a while. They don't know when he would come back and show up. But they were supposed to be ready. Any time that he would show up, the celebration was to stop. So Jesus, in this particular uh, teaching, he's teaching three main points that I want to talk about here on today. He's teaching three main points. He's teaching about expectancy. Expectancy. They were to be expecting the return of the bridegroom with his bride. 
Same likewise with us. We ought to be expecting Jesus to come. To come anytime at a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We are to be ready. We are the servants of the Lord. And, and collectively, we make up his bride. And he wants us to be in a level of expectation. I'm expecting the Lord to come. And my, my level of expectation determines my, my labor and my work with the Lord. And he's saying that, that, that we should be looking for the Master's return. How, how do we look for the Master's return? We look also at the miracles, signs, and wonders that are going on in the church on today. We, we look and see and we, we wait. Uh, for the Lord to come and we're literally waiting with expectation. The scripture says, when I was studying about this, he dealt with my mind about that scripture that we always quote in St. John chapter 14, where it says that the Lord is he's going away to prepare a place for you, that where I am, they may be also. And, and that directly correlates to uh, the wedding ceremony, how uh, the, the bride, the groom, he goes to prepare a place for his bride, that, that where he dwells, uh, the bride shall dwell also. Uh, so there's an expectation, that, there's an expectation that, uh, that I'm, I'm living to live again, and I'm waiting on the Lord. Uh, you've got to have an expectation. But, what is your expectation? Are you expecting to go back with him? And then Jesus is teaching also about preparedness. Being prepared. You know, if you're going to go back with Jesus, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be ready. And that's what he was teaching in that parable about they didn't know what time the, the bridegroom would come uh, for the ceremony or would watch. He would show up. But they had to prepared. They had to be ready. And that's what the Lord is telling us on today. We have to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We don't want him to catch us as a thief in the night. We want to be ready. And, and how do you get ready? You, you think about your father's business. You, you work and you labor uh, in the household of the Lord. And, and that's what they were supposed to do in that, in that scenario that Jesus taught us that they were supposed to get all things prepared for his coming. And, and that's what we ought to do. We ought to uh, find ourselves doing everything we can uh, in the house of the Lord to be prepared for his coming. We, we have to be ready because we don't, we don't know when the master is coming, but, but I want to be prepared for his coming. I want to get myself built up. I want to keep myself unspotted. I want to watch as well as pray. I want to build myself up on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, because you've got a lot of opposition. You've got a, a lot of struggle that come at you, but he never tells you not to be prepared. You, you got to be prepared. you got to watch, because the thief can come at any hour. The thief can come at any time, and you can to be on God. The Bible says, let a man examine himself uh, to see whether or not he or she is walking in the faith. You, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss the coming of the Lord. You, you want to be ready. You, you want to be prepared for when Jesus comes. Because the Bible says that, uh, that the Lord will come uh, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the Bible says that the dead in Christ, they're going to rise up first, and that we that are alive and remain are be going to be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So you want to be ready. You, you want to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And, and don't say in your heart that the Lord is delaying his coming because you don't know the time or the seasons, but what the Father has placed in his own hands. But you want to be ready. Tell somebody I want to be ready. Uh, I want to be ready. I want to get my house in order. I want to get my house in order because I don't want to miss this. I, oh God, I can, a lot of things in life I, I can miss.
next minute. I want this when Jesus touched that sky. I want this when Jesus says, Come, my people. Uh, it's going to be all over in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, but you got to prepare yourself. Oh, my God, how do you prepare yourself? you got to get yourself baptized in the name of Jesus and, and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And what worthy of the vocation works you can call it. You have to live a lifestyle that, that's conducive to holiness and righteousness. You've got to get yourself ready. How do you get yourself ready? You gotta lay aside every weight uh, and the sin that does so easily beset you, and keep your eye on Jesus, keep your focus on the Lord. That's, that's what you gotta do. You gotta keep your mind on Jesus and, and set your affections on things above where, where Christ sit at the right hand of the Father. Don't, don't allow distractions to, to stop you. Don't, don't allow people to stop you. Don't, don't allow to stop you. Don't let him to stop you. Oh, you better get ready. Tell me somebody, I ain't got time for foolishness. But I got to get ready for Jesus. Oh, I gotta keep my eye on the prize. I gotta press toward the mark of the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, God, I gotta see Jesus. Oh, my Lord, I gotta see him. I gotta live upon this place. I gotta see him. Seeing him, I gotta let everything go that is not like God. You gotta let things go that is not like him. You, oh God, people want to let you, but you gotta let go of oh God. People may talk about you, but you gotta let go of oh God. You, you gotta hold on until you change come. You gotta fight the good fight of faith and lay all the way to the life. Because there's something greater, oh, something to your neighbor. Yeah. 